so excited to be here. Stand on your feet for a minute. I just want to give honor where honor is due. The Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. And we are so privileged. It's such a, a privilege for us to be part of CRC as a movement, as local churches, uh, to have the visionary leaders we have in Pastor Ad and Pastor Noretta. And uh, we were at a conference recently just listening to what pastors are doing all over the world. Let me tell you, there uh, are very few, if any other churches I know, that on a local church uh, level get between 600 and 800 people saved every single Sunday. We must never take for granted what we are part of. Come on, let's just give it up for Pastor Ad and Pastor Noretta, for all the senior pastors in the different churches this morning. And while we're still standing this morning, it's my honor to, visit all, uh, to welcome all the first-time visitors. Um, to welcome CRC Johannesburg, my church in Durban and Belito, Cape Town, Stellenbosch, Valcom, George, Nelspreit, Rustenburg, Uppington, Polakwani, Polesmore Prison, Pretoria Central Prison, Hrtflay Prison, Uppington Prison, Kimberley Prisons, George Prison, the live stream viewers, TV audience, faithchannel.com and Radio Panorama. Come on, CRC Bloemfontein, let's just give it up for all. Isn't technology amazing? Wow. Awesome. Then just shake somebody's hand again and you may be seated. Great to be in church. Really an honor, a privilege this morning. There is no place like the local church. And I even know when Pastor Ad is not in his pulpit, I'm exactly the same when I'm not in my church, that come 7.30 when your first service starts, you start getting a little bit, uh, you want to be here. There's no place in, like being in home, in your own church, where, where God is uh, doing great things, especially uh, what God is doing amongst you here in Bloemfontein. You know, I've traveled with Pastor on a few occasions and I watch the clock as it gets to 7.30. I see him. He, he's thinking Bloemfontein and Pretoria and, and all the other places. It gets to 9 o'clock. It's the same thing. and gets to 11 o'clock and it's the same thing. It gets to 6 o'clock in the evening, no matter what time it is in the other places. Because we love the local church. The local church is the hope of the world. And this morning what I want to speak to you about is the local church being Noah's Ark of today. Local church be Noah's Ark of today. There's a story told about a pastor of a church of about 250 people, and he spoke about the gifts in the body of Christ. He was building his message around Ephesians chapter 4, and he was speaking about the different gifts, and he was relating them to different divisions within the army. And he said this gift relates to, 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 to the navy, and this gift relates to, 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 to the, the army, and this gift relates to the air force, and this gift, and he was going on the special forces. And, and he said, each one of you have to play a part in the army of God. Not the 80-20 principle where, where 20 people are doing 80% of the work. It says where everybody does their share, it causes the growth of the body. And while he's preaching, he sees Johnny sitting over there, and he realizes, but Johnny hasn't been in church for over six months. So he decides, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confront Johnny after the service and ask him, what division is he playing? What, what part is he playing in the church? And as he stands at the door, shakes everybody's hands, God bless you, thank you for the nice, God bless you, God bless you. Here comes Johnny, he's going to catch Johnny. So he says, Johnny, Johnny, you heard the message, right? Yes, pastor. You heard the different divisions? Yes, pastor. He says, what division are you in? And Johnny, quick as anything, says, I'm in the secret service. Listen, family, we don't need secret service Christians. We've got to go public with the message of Jesus Christ. We've got to go public with the church of Jesus Christ. I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1 verse 20, reading from the message translation. All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from the death and set him on a throne in deep heaven. In charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power exempt from his rule. And not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all, has the final word on everything. At the center of all this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. Well, I'm going to read that again. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which He speaks and acts, by which He fills everything with His presence. When, when I read that scripture and meditated upon that scripture, it, it just smacked me between the eyes. Because we try and fit church into our lives, not us but others and, and, and the church becomes to sort of add on to what God wants to do 
It's like if I've got the time to go to the church. I'll see what the weather's like to determine whether I go to church. If I'm on a holiday, am I going to go to the church? Now, now I'm not trying to bring a heavy here. I'm saying, listen, if you want to get the benefits of real, of real Christianity, you've got to understand that the church represents Christ's body, and the world is peripheral to the church. The church is not peripheral to the world. The life comes out of the church, Ezekiel says it. The life flows from the sanctuary. And as Christians, if we want to carry the life of God, we need to be planted in the house of God. We need to be committed to the church of God. In Matthew 16, when they came to Jesus, and he, he, he said to them, who do the people say that I am? And some said, you're this one, and some said, you're that one. He said, who do you say that I am? And Simon, the, the risk taker, the CRC member, says, listen, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, listen, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And upon this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. There's nothing like the local church. We are the hope of the world. Its beauty is indescribable. Its power, breathtaking. Its potential, unlimited. I mean, I listened to the worship team this morning. Awesome. Brilliant. Like all the other churches that are listening this morning, your worship teams, awesome. There's so much potential. It comforts the grieving, heals the downtrodden and disillusioned. It breaks the chains of, addition, of addictions and frees the oppressed. It saves the lost. Jesus had and still has big plans for his church. He says, not just somebody saying, Jesus, our Savior, said his church will be able to stand against the gates, the forces, literally the doors of hell. The local church. The local church, Noah's Ark of today. We go back to the book of Genesis, the, back, the book of beginnings, and we read how God created man and in his image and his likeness and how God gave him dominion, the right, the power to govern and control, and how God said, listen, everything on life is produced by the law of seed time and harvest. Whatever man sows, he reaps. And he says, listen, Adam, here you go, man. Lead. And Adam messes up. And sin comes into the world. And in Genesis chapter 6, we see the Bible is very clear how, how, how the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. For he is indeed flesh, and yet his days shall be 120 years. Verse 5 of Genesis 6, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. It's the same God a few chapters earlier when he created everything, said it is good. And then he created man, he said it is very good. Yeah. And then he's grieved. Because man has moved away from his pattern. So God comes. And it says in verse 8 of Genesis chapter 6, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. When you read that again, I want you to put your name in the place of Noah. Because God has moved sovereignly in your life that you're sitting in a CRC church somewhere in South Africa. But Glenn found grace in the eyes of the Lord. For years, Glenn did what he wanted to do. Glenn moved where he wanted to move and, 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 and served his own life the way he wanted to serve. But then Glenn found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then God comes to Noah in verse 14 and says to him, Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. In other words, build the ark. Build the ark. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. God gave Noah an instruction. God gave Noah a pattern and said, listen, I'm grieving about man. I'm going to flood the earth. I'm going to start afresh. Born again. The past is gone. Going to give you a fresh future. But this is my pattern. This is the way I want you to do it. Build an ark. And Noah obeyed in what was strange to the world around him. I mean, I want you to think for a few seconds. Just, just think. Let's not be Christians now. Let's think. <laughs> okay. Let's think. Here's Noah. 
living in the desert. God comes to Noah and says, listen, I've got, I'm upset about a few things. I'm going to flood the earth. I want you to build an ark. And Noah's going to look at God. What is an ark? Just think. They're in the desert. What is a flood? Now, an ark is a boat. What is a boat, God? Oh, well, let me explain to you. I'm going to let it rain. God, we're in the desert. We haven't seen rain for I don't know how many hundreds of years. What is rain? No, it's water coming down, and it's going to flood the earth, and you're going to be on this ark, this boat, and it's going to flow. But you see, Noah didn't question what God said and, and made an opinion based on what God said and, and formulated a search. He, he obeyed what God said. You want me to build an ark? I'll build an ark. Can you imagine? He takes out the gopher wood. He draws a pattern on the ground, this big boat that he's going to build with many levels and, and, and put windows near the top. And I'm going to go into all those details. But, but, he, but he starts putting the... Can you imagine the neighbors? Some of us won't even pray in tongues in our home because we wonder what the neighbors will say. We're embarrassed to go to church with our Bible, so we hide it in our tog bag and pretend we're going to germ. Submarine Christians just come up on a Sunday quickly for a service and duck down for the rest of the week. Noah's got to build this massive ark. Can you imagine? They come and, and, and they look, what are you doing, Noah? Building an ark. Noah, what is an ark? Oh, well, God spoke to me. It's going to rain. We need this boat to, to save us. And Come, you can help me. Are you mad? What are you smoking, Noah? What's going on, Noah? Building the ark. Can you imagine the kids, their friends, the teasing, the ridicule? You see, I relate it to the local church of today. God's called us to build something that the world doesn't fully understand. You see, some of your friends and some of your family think you're crazy when you come to church on a Sunday morning and you say, listen, I'm not going to the dam. I'm not going to the beach. I'm not going to the cricket match now. I'm first going to seek God this morning. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto me. I'm putting God first. Why don't you join me? Are you mad? Do you lift your hands in church? Mm hmm you got a home, that home, home cell thing? Mm hmm Do you pray in tongues? Mm hmm Don't tell me you tithe. <laughs> they think we're weird. But you see, we're busy building Noah's Ark of today. Yeah. What did Noah's Ark represent? Noah's Ark was, was, was a place of safety, a place of protection, a place of fruitfulness, a place of salvation. You see, it protects us from the storms of life, the attacks of the enemy, spiritual and physical. Noah's ark of today is the local church. Psalm 92 verse 12 says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall... Come on, somebody, if you're going to clap for Jesus, give him some praise. He's given us a pattern. I think when we're around something that's good, sometimes we take it for granted. Now, I'm not saying you, it's holiday time, and, and you're all in church here in, in Bloemfontein and Johannesburg and Durban and Belito and the places are packed out. I'm talking about those other people who take the church for granted. That run to the church in crisis, and as soon as their crisis seems to be over, they leave the church. That's not God's pattern. His pattern is we're planted, we're established, that we go through the journey, that we become all that He destined us to be. I'll speak about that tonight. But we have to be planted in the local church. We need to put honor back on the church. The Bible describes it as the body of Christ. The church universal worldwide and the church local where God has, built, uh, has established us. You see, the truth is, family, that what you do not honor, you cannot receive from. What you do not honor. If church is not a priority to your life, you'll never receive the impact that God wants you to have from the church. If you don't want to put honor upon your pastors, you cannot receive from them. Oh, you know one of those honoring things. Now the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. 
And it's that individual's responsibility to go into these private places and say, God, all that honor that was bestowed upon me, I now put it back on you. I give you all the honor. I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor. We think it's giving honor that after you, you, you win a rugby match, you, you stand up there in front of the television when you get the man of the match, and, and well done to the cheaters. Three out of four, well done. Well done to the sharks. And, and I can't forget rugby. But, 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 but you stand on the, on the side of the field, and, and, and the TV interview says, I just want to give honor to Jesus. The real honor to Jesus is when people put accolades on you, and you go into the private place, and you get on your knees. And for a period of time, you say, Jesus, I honor you. Thank you for the gift that is in me. Thank you I can use it for your glory. Thank you that that I can serve you. You see, the local church is a place where we need to be committed to. It's Noah's Ark of the day. I want you to hear it. It's not just some nonprofit organization. It's not just some charity network. It is where the river of God flows from, the local church. I will build my church. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The forces of darkness cannot overcome it. You see, family, what you don't celebrate cannot produce the fruit it was intended to produce. We need to be the church that Jesus died to create. In the book of Acts, I love it, God takes a bunch of of people, begins to transform them into His church. He he takes a bunch of of ragtag believers with a few resources, and they turn the world upside down. God begins to display His church. Number one, it was part of God's plan. The church of God's plan, of God, was, was part of His plan. From the beginning, Noah's Ark was a pattern, just a pattern. The church is God's plan. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and, and then There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The church. It's God's design. It's God's design. You need to understand that that, that the church is supposed to be different to the world. I was raised in a very conservative denominational church and and we used to speak of God the Father, God the Son, loudly like that. Then God the Holy Spirit. Excuse me? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we were scared that the Holy Spirit might just do something in our lives that, that we're uncomfortable with. Because we want to fit in. But until we understand that the church is God's plan, and God is sovereign, and when you plant it in the local church, no matter what you're going through, you understand that God is still in control, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper because you're in the local church. Whatever is born of God shall overcome because you're in the local church. It's God's plan. Let me, let, me, let me just throw this out. That in the local church, God planned you. Maybe some of you aren't ready for this one. Maybe, maybe Johannesburg's not ready. That Johannesburg new location is absolutely awesome. I was with Pastor out there. Fantastic. Can't wait to, to go and visit there. Johannesburg's new location. God's plan. You see, God's plan for you was to set you in the house as it pleased Him. You think that this church chose you. No, God set you here. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 18, He sets the members in the body. Another scripture says it this way, He cements them. When we have a visitor come to the church, He says, I think I might just join your church. No, no, no. God set you. God sent you. God cements you. You better stay where God wants you because He knows the pastor that you need that is going to be used by Him to bring out the gift of God that is in you. 
Hmm. But I, I just felt the Lord move me. Don't know what Lord you heard. It's sad. It really is sad to see how many people have moved out of the place that God set them. And then you don't see it in a year. You see it in two, three, four, five years later. I bumped into a guy in Durban recently who used to be in our church and through circumstances left the church. And, and, and we were moving into our new building a few weeks ago. And, and, and Pastor Ad came and opened it for us. And I bumped into the guy the day before we moved in. And, and we're going bigger and better. And, and I bumped into this guy and I asked him, how's your life? And he's going nowhere. I didn't rejoice but I thought to myself in this 12-year journey, I'm going somewhere, and where are you going? You disconnected from the place God set you to be a member, to be a contributor, to be a builder, the local church, the hope of the world. It's God's plan. It's God's plan. We're going to have communion just now, and the Bible says this, many are ill in the body because they did not discern Honor the body, the church of Jesus Christ. But when they come together, common vision and purpose with His plan for all to gather together, as in Hebrews 10, 25, is not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. When, when we come together, the blessing of God is upon the church. Not to pick and choose. You and I will never receive the full benefits of God's plan through the local church without commitment to the local church. By the way, to pick and choose how you will support the church is to give Satan an inroad into your life. Through your inconsistency, not yours, the other people understand that. Satan can discourage and cause disunity in the body. It's God's plan, family. Wherever you are sitting this morning in the CRC church throughout this country, it's God's plan. Don't dishonor the local church. Don't dishonor your local church. Number two, it's God's power. God's power is found in the local church. The Bible says when they were all together in one accord, one place, the manifest presence of God's power fell. Psalm 133 says where there is unity, God commands a blessing. It was a normal prayer meeting which turned into something which could not be explained. God's power showed up like flames of fire indwelt each one and gave them the ability to do something unusual. You know, when you witness to somebody and they, they, they start talking to you, so what kind of church do you go to? You know what's coming next. Do you go to one of those happy clappy churches? Like my father once described me as a pastor, he said, you, you pastor one of those churches that, that make people lift their hands up in the air and you send dwarfs, dwarfs to steal money out their pockets. Because <laughs> people don't understand the church. I was on a plane and bumped into an old cricket friend and, and we ended up sitting next to each other flying to Johannesburg to get to Bloemfontein and, and we started talking and, and he told me what church he goes to and, and how conservative he is and it's not a criticism but he told me and, and he said to me, are you one of those, you're in the ministry, right? You're, you're a priest, right? I said, right. He says, are you one of those happy clappy guys? No, no, you come to our church and uh, we dwarp, dwarp you with, with, with sea lemon, uh, with lemon juice, we make you sad and grumpy. No, man, there's power to overcome that's found in the church. The church is a life source. River of life flows out of the sanctuary. Our lives are changed in the church when we come and stand together, and it gives us the ability to do something unusual. Daniel 11:32b says, The people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Great exploits are the norm. For the people of God to do what humans say is impossible. I, I, would, I would give, I don't know what I would give, to have been in the first CRC meeting here in Bloemfontein. When Pastor Ad stood up to share the vision of CRC. Oh, I, I don't know what I would do to, to just get that. I don't know who was there. Uh, I'm sure one or two of you were, but, but I, what I would do... And to see, not so much him sharing the vision, but the reaction of the people. 
And now some of them that didn't stay around, I would like to bring them into to a CRC service and, and, and tell them what God has done in CRC. Are you, I don't like the hand clapping. I don't like the praying in tongues. I don't like the giving. But you know what's amazing? God has caused an oasis of life in Bloemfontein to, to flow out of Bloemfontein to Pretoria to Johannesburg to Cape Town to Durban to, to all over the world, London, all over the world, Australia. Come on, man. When people planted in the house of God do something for God, it, it's unexplainable. People have to say it's God. God's power to do extraordinary things when everybody does their share. This is what we're doing with some not so committed. Imagine what we can do. Imagine what we can do when everybody. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and say, but I'm doing my share, man. Encourage others to do this. Encourage others to carry the load with us, the burden with us. Look what we've achieved in such a short time. Imagine what we're still going to do as we stand together in Jesus' name. God's power. For God's purpose. Listen carefully. For God's purpose. The way God works is powerful. And His people are almost always the instrument which he uses to bring his message to others. In Acts chapter 2 verse 14 it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Verse 37, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Here's the amazing thing. God plans the church. God releases His power through the church to establish His purpose in the world. The Holy Spirit falls and all these people start praying in strange tongues and the world sees the strange manifestation and accuses them of being drunk and Peter, the CRC member, the risk taker, stands up. Says, hey, these people aren't drunk. This is what was prophesied. The Holy Spirit has fallen. God is empowering His people to build His church. And they were cut to the heart. You see, the local church brings hope. Because the local church lives God's plan, so people ask the question, what must we do? We can't be lukewarm members, family. We can't be pure warm members. We have to be committed to the local church. We have to show our commitment so people will look at us with strangeness and say, listen, I see something in your life. What must we do to have what you have? And because Peter stood up. These people's heart was pierced by the Holy Spirit, softened by His obedience and testimony and evidence of the believers. And they brought hope as they lived God's plan, were filled with God's power and participated in God's purpose. And here's the result. 3,000 people were saved in one day. And a footnote in the one translation of the Bible says this, and they didn't stop there. You see, the challenge sometimes we face as the church, we have one great service or we have, we, have, we have a great move of God for a period of time and then we become familiar with what God is doing. Let us never become familiar with what God is doing in CRC. Let us never take for granted what God is doing in CRC. Let us always bring back honor to, to the vehicle God has chosen to use in our lives, which is the local church, Noah's Ark of today, CRC. You see, the fourth thing, I'm going to close with this. It's always dangerous when pastors say, I'm going to close. 
I think it's a, it's a word that we stutter on. I'm going to close. I'm going to, I'm going to close now. I'm going to, I'm going to close. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. I'm going to say it all the time, so we'll really close now. We're going to close. It's God's plan. It's God's power. It's God's purpose. It's God's pattern. Listen carefully. Verse 42. This is why they continued. And they continued... Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, leadership, fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, unity, had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and, listen to the simplicity of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Here we see God's revealed pattern. When every person takes his place, when every person totally commits to the cause of, of Christ and engages as a member of the family. I got to, I got to, I got to see us. I go, no, no. Are you a part of that family? Are you committed to the tribe? Are you committed to the cause of Christ through that vehicle. Are you committed? Not just I go. I make up a number. It's fine to start just by coming, but you know, we, we've got that saying, come as you are, but, but here's the truth. Don't stay as you came. <laughs> come on, man. This is for him. We, we can come as a visitor. We can come as a, as a person that's inquiring. But once God touches you, which He will in these locations, once He touches you, you have to engage. You have to become part of the body and serve in the body using your gift, your time, your talent, your treasure. It's part of God's plan. It's part of God's pattern. The Bible says they engaged in discipleship. Fellowship. Prayer. I love it. CRC is praying all over the country this week between 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the morning. We're praying, we're praying, we're seeking God. Somebody asked me, but pastor, why, things are going quite nice in the church. Why are we going to press in and, and sacrifice now? Because you don't prune a rose when it's dead. <laughs> you prune it when it's blossoming so that you can produce more uh, rose buds the following season. To make it more fruitful. We have to seek God more than ever before now. I wonder if some of our members have ever been to a prayer meeting. I challenge you this week. Pray. It says, it says they were involved in ministry. There's so many different gifts here this morning. Throughout all the different local churches in the different cities throughout our nation. Throughout the world. They worshipped not weekly, but daily. We need to worship daily. And an overflow of their daily lives, listen to this carefully, was people being saved. Listen carefully. Discipleship, fellowship, prayer, ministry, worship, and the overflow of their daily lives were people being saved. You see, family church is not a group of people that just come to a building. Church is a group of people totally focused on God. Totally focused on His Word, His plan, His power, His purpose, and His pattern. And this is the church that stands against the forces of hell. I don't know if you remember the story of the flight of Apollo 13 in 1970. A movie was made about this story, a true story. And, and what actually took place was the spacecraft taken off. Everything was going fine for the first, I think it was 59 minutes of the flight. And then alarm bells started to ringing. And there was a well-known phrase that, that came out of that. And it was, 
Houston, we have a problem. And there's great similarities to the church of Jesus Christ. Because the course of the spacecraft was charted. It was planned. The journey even began, and then the problem came. You see, Jesus had a specific plan to release his power for the purpose of winning souls. And he gave us a pattern. It was all strategically planned, charted, and began. But as soon as there was a challenge, and the this, this spacecraft began to, 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 to show signs of being destroyed, everybody was confused and trying to work out what was going on. How are we going to rectify the problem? But one man stood up and said, listen, only one thing matters. Let's get the crew back safely down. And in the midst of the confusion in this world of the local church, only one thing really matters. The purpose for which the church was created for. To be Noah's Ark of today. And when that space station and those people, those controllers, went back to their simple purpose of saving the crew, they were able to bring back the three crew members and save them. The truth is the church sometimes becomes too complicated, too program oriented and we forget we're a hospital, Noah's Ark of today. Jesus said his last statements to his church were, he came and spoke to him saying in Matthew 28, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And he's conduit. His vessel of choice, come on, say it, the local church. The local church. Come on, say it in the other locations this morning, the local church. Come on, say, I love my church. Now, really say it as if you believe it this morning. I love my church. You see, this means as we go, we show. And as we show, we tell. And as we tell, we bring. And as we bring, we baptize. And as we baptize, we grow. And as we grow, we go again. 